Hey there, today I want to show you how to do YouTube video embedding and just general cool code that you can manipulate lots of fun stuff for desktops, phones, etc. So let's start off by using Karnak. This is a really, really cool program. So I'm going to go to Karnak and I'm on a Windows computer for this emulator. I'm going to download it, show it to you, there it is. And I'm going to just copy Karnak, which is in the zip file. I could actually just open it up and show you, show you that little kind of step-by-step -step thing. Downloads, Karnak, there it is. Right click, and I could just open it. There it is. Now I like to copy these type of programs. And then go to programs, I've already put it in here. And then paste. Ta-da! Now, I also like to put Karnak down on my desktop toolbar so I can actually open it up and run it. Now watch this. It's over there doing its thing. Now if I minimize that, I'm going to type 1, 2, 3, 4. Look at the top right side of the screen. You can see what's going. So if I click here and you wonder how do you get that that folder over on the right side, you can see the Windows keys that I'm pressing. And then maybe go over here, Windows key over here. How did he get it up high and then shrink it? The whole way you can see everything that I do. That's great. Picture in picture of Karnak. So let's get to the business of YouTube videos. A couple of important things. YouTube.com. We're about to watch a fun video, let's say, this Pink Panther video. And it plays. If it doesn't, and you see a an advertisement, just go to Chrome Ad Block YouTube and you should be able to see a plugin for it right here. There's quite a few of them, so make sure it's a, a valid one. There's quite a few uh, fake ones out there. So this one by Ad Remover is pretty darn good. Over 8 million users, pretty good 4 out of 5 reviews. So let's look in our extensions, if you've already added it, and make sure it's there. Okay? Let's go back here and take a look at this cool video. All right. <laughs> uh, let, let's let's take this video and I want to share it so you'll see all these different networks you can share on platforms click on embed now it shows you the video and then you can actually slide down up and down and look at look at this embed options the player controls developer sample all this stuff so let's just highlight the video here and copy that code copy see up there control C now let's go into a text editor. You should have down here. And I've already saved it, but let's say I'd, I don't know, create that. It's in Notepad++, very cool program. Save it. I'd like to go to my web server, htdocs. I made a folder called it YouTube Videos. And then let's just call this uh, and slide up. It's, it's very interesting that they don't put it there first. All types. Let's call it example underscore one basic video dot PHP. Let's call it that. Let's see what it does after it's been saved. You can see all the hypertext uh, markup is really, really nice in this program. So go over here, type in localhost on your web server, on your computer, if you're doing it from home. And you can tell that at the bottom. And I have an Apache monitor running. And I have tutorials on how to set this stuff up too. All right, so there's localhost. Let's drop this onto the bookmarks bar. And you'll say, where's my bookmarks bar? It's here. And then you go to bookmarks, show bookmarks bar, control shift B, watch. Item, show, item, 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 Good stuff. So let's right click on that and go to properties of the whole thing. Let's edit it. So use the Firefox. Localhost. Save it. Boom. Look what we got. Let's go to YouTube videos. Example one, basic video. See? Let's uh, shrink back down. And let's play that video. <laughs> Great. It's on our web now. What if we wanted to make it legit? Let's do this. Let's make an HTML page. And... And end HTML. Save it. 
Not much of a difference. Let's glue the body. And that's where this iframe comes into play. Let me open this up a little bit. And shrink it down. And then do the iframe tab in twice. So it has a nice structure to it. And body. So far, so good. Same video, no difference. Now, in HTML, we like to put the header at the top. And an add header. And then here we'll put link for a style sheet, etc. I like to do this. HTML doesn't really care about empty spaces, so it's nice to keep that visible about what's going on. See, everything works great. Now, what if we did something really cool like this? We took a bunch of YouTube videos, and we went to my friend Cassia's website that I built, and we went to her videos and watched what this does. It loads a bunch of them, and the really cool thing is, if we resize this to a phone size, they suddenly jump to a full size video. So the button is still. So how the heck does that work? It went from two to one column. Well, you're right. It's kind of like an accordion or a flexible design, but we did it ourselves. So how do we do it? Let's look at the page source. Blowing it up a little bit. Let's look at my page and my media. Let's look at media. Video block, video block small, vid title, H shot, some of these other things that I did. Just to have the whole thing lay out. Now look at this. Ampersand media screen and it's between these two sizes. Now the video block's 100% and then how big other things are and what's going on. It's very, very cool. Now I got some of this from a tutorial. I can't really remember where I got it from, but it wasn't that hard to figure out myself and kind of piece the rest of it together. So let's go back to here and look at the page code that I do. All right, so now, if you look here, my design has uh, top menu, menu, etc. But let's go down a little bit further. And let's look for this. Again, when things get smaller, things change in this, the way I designed it. So let's look at this. Story quarter, story half, and story full should be in there somewhere. I just, maybe I didn't add it. So, half and full. Now you would think a quarter of a story, how big would that be? One fourth, that's 25%. But when things get resized on a phone, that'd be way too small. So I made both story half and quarter, when they get smaller, full size. But look at this, story half. A little smidge off, 47, not quite 50% quite because all the weird padding and margins that happen with some design that I do. Story half image, it's 100% inside. Story quarter, 24 again, not quite 25%. Don't worry about this stuff, just look at that. It's almost 25% because a perfect 25 won't fit. Just imagine the edges of a fence if it was outside of the shape of something. We've had to deal with that for years. So let's take a look at the way this is laid out. Let's go back here and we'll go to the web page itself that I did. And we'll do, we'll do this. Let me go back here. Let me maximize what's going on here. And then I'll do this so you can take a look at how I built it. It's really cool. All right, so if I want to right click and look at this, uh, maybe just this element right here, inspect it. Now I can expand all to show you. There we go. All right, so there's a lot to look at. I mean, there's just tons. That's YouTube's fault, not mine. All right, but what I did, if you close the content, was I made it so that we have a class for a menu button for all the different things that are at the top. But when I do the actual videos themselves, the content, this is very, very simple, the way I designed it. So what I did was forget the iframe itself, but what I have is story half and video right half. So let's take a look at how this is done. Let me look at my PHP file to show you what's going on. And I will go to, oh, one I'll bring it here locally so you can see it. Let me show you how this is done. I wrote this and I've got a CSS M, a CSS video and a CSS video V. Now all this stuff is so simple to do. The hard part was the actual CSS file. 
So the actual CSS file was driving me nuts forever and I finally figured it out. This is the magic in here on how to size something that's coming in, what size the video is and what's going on in the iframe itself and how to like shrink it all in. So basically, we're allowing another program to do all that hard work. So let's, let's take a look at how I did her videos themselves. Let's go to my menus that I built and drop that in here for you. Actually, into the, the video section itself. So in her video, I did this. What is that gobbledygook? What is that? Okay, that's the YouTube video link. How big I want it to be. Is it YouTube or is it Vimeo? And is it shown or is it hidden? Pretty cool, huh? So let's go into it. Let's take a look at the YouTube video itself. Let's go into her video right here. Let's go into the very first one. And click on YouTube to take a look at it. All right, boom. So now we're here at her page. Let's look up at the top and look at the name of the video. Let's just take the whole thing so you can understand a little more clearly. I'm gonna copy the web address, go back into here, and I'm gonna do this to show you. That's the web address that's on the internet. Now if you take the whole thing where it says youtube.com watch and you take this off, you're left with a question mark. That is a variable. So the video is, or equals, there's the video. The feature is something else and how it's embedded, what's going on. So the first variable is a question mark. And the second variable, third, fourth, fifth, would be an ampersand. So if we get rid of that, look at what we have. Then I put half height. Then I put YouTube and whether or not it's shown or hidden. Now, what is all that? I'll show you. I did have this a different way. I'll show you what it looks like. At first, wait, I'll drop it on over here. At first I had it and it looked like this. So I had PHP running a little echo of a function that I built, which you already saw, that's this. And you'll see it here. Function for CSS video. What's the link? How big it is? And it just formats it, you know? Then I did one that combines the M, which is multiple. So I have CSS video for Vimeo and see the wrapper itself. I have player.vimeo.com forward slash video forward slash and it's in an iframe and it works fine. iframe for the YouTube version and I thought you know what that's a lot of redundant stuff. What if there's another format later on I'm going to use? So so far I've made it so there's V and Y Vimeo and YouTube and it just puts the link that I have saved in and then it puts it into the string right here and then sends the same stuff back. It's the same layout, same everything. It works great. Then I did something really, 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 really cool. Um, I decided to, let's see. I decided to make a video editor for it because she had one video that she didn't want to watch anymore or wasn't available. And I thought, ah, oh, what if I write a program that does this? Wouldn't that be cool? So I did. So if I go here, and I go to her web address, which I'll have to pause so you don't see her password. Um, YouTube. No. Um, there we go. So inside of a back end that I built, pause it right here so nobody sees this. There we go. So in here I built video editor. This is so fun. All right, so this dynamically loads off the internet, the videos in an iframe format. Right? That's, those are the actual videos themselves. Then it shows me the hyperlink, which I can change. Vimeo or YouTube, quarter, half full, hide show, and of course delete. But I thought, you know, well, and save videos at the bottom. What if I want to organize this? What if I want her in this pink dress at the top? Well, I wrote a little function in jQuery that brings it on up and saves it. And what we don't see is the original placements are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And when you move it, you have to memorize where it changed to. There's no way to send that information to PHP that I'm really aware of. So 
if I show you the page source, there's some cool hidden stuff here. So let me just drop that off and show it to you like this side by side. Oops, I know it's going to do that. That's interesting. Okay, so in here there's a radio group. And inside the radio group I have text input for the address. Then I have the radio for the platform, whether it's YouTube or Vimeo. The size, whether it's quarter, half, or full, there's a radio buttons, as you see, hide and show. But hidden variables that I have are the order and the order originally that it was at, and I gave it always a value through a loop that I built in uh, PHP. So let's look at the bottom, way at the bottom. There's a bunch of code. This is so simple to do. So I made it sortable in uh, what you see above. That was the end of it. And inside of sortable, I did update function whenever it gets updated. Go to this event, user interface, I don't need any of that stuff. Fix order. So on old JavaScript, I went into here and then I made a loop and I found everything called vidEdit box. I found how long it is. And then I went through a loop for the things that I changed and just change it to the normal value now compared to what it was before. Very, very cool. And then when I saved it, you can see in the uh, PHP that I wrote that, let me see, let me open up my editor. So when I wanted to save that, I'll show you. Admin, video editor. Now here, to save the videos, I made sure that I have order, order original, show, platform, size, and link. Now the cool thing about this is, this is a preview from when I was programming to try to figure it out. And this is the output. This is so, this is so cool. So this outputs to the file that I want, video editor, test, etc. Now that's what I commented out because I didn't want to make any mistakes in the actual file. So post file, what's the name of the file? Ah, so if we go to the video editor itself, the program, you'll notice that towards the bottom of the field that I built, I made something very simple. Here it is. Type input hidden file is value P dollar sign F dollar sign. What's P and F? The very top, P is the path, which is to root of the whole website, dot dot backslash dot dot backslash dot dot backslash menu systems video and videos.txt. Now let me show you how I built this whole thing together. Bring this from my other computer and show you. Now, what you're seeing is that in her website, I have a CSS area, a data area to hold the images and slideshows, JavaScript if I need some slideshow stuff that I wrote, menus, menu systems, video, and look at this video text. Well, there it is. That's what we were just working with. And how about the videos.php, which is the older version. So I think it's kind of simpler. I think one versus the other, it's kind of neat. Let's take a look. It saves a lot, but it's very obscure. So it's always good to write notes to yourself when you do things like this about what those, the, what those numbers actually mean. So if I went into the actual editor itself and went to the admin area where I have that, I can show you that this lets us know that 0, 1, 2, and 3, the array that gets blown up, that gets exploded, is 0, 1, 2, and 3. So all that stuff put together is really, really fun. And then when it plays back, it's wonderful. Like, I, let's say I want this above here, the UJF above the CZN. There it is. Save the videos. Reload this again to take a look. And there it is. And I can go back to home, the actual home page design, and look at my videos. And that's the first video. So there it is. Designing multiple ways how to get into there. Now all of this, all this CSS code and a demo I'm going to put online so you can actually have a, a breakdown of how to do it. And then I'll type out exactly every step, but it's a lot to go through. So enjoy it.